Hi. So let's look at the development life cycle for webs. So in other sections we have seen the system development life cycle. And for web it's mostly the same. So let's look at the different steps we need to undertake. We need to analyze, plan, design, implement a web, test it, make it public online and maintain it. So let's look at each of these steps more in detail. So first, in the analysis phase, we always have to find out what is the purpose of this website? Who is going to use it? And what is the target audience? And what is the message that I want to get across with my website? And who are my competitors? And what do they have on their website? So we need to analyze all these things and make clear what is the contents that we want to our page and what is the message that we want to get across and who is going to read it. So once we have that clear, we can go to the planning phase. We can plan the development of our website. So we can make, for example, a, a sitemap so that we already know what are the different elements that we're going to have on our website. What are the different parts of content? We have to understand the navigation system. How do we want our users to navigate through our page? Do we want to use tabs? Do we want to use one menu? What do we, how do we want to present it to the user? And how do we want to facilitate to them navigation through the contents that we're going to display? And then we have to see where are we going to place this content? Are we going to place it all together on one page? Are we going to divide it? What is going to be this placement? And when we know, we can elect, um, uh, select the technologies. What type of databases are we going to use? Which application frameworks? And where are we going to put the servers? Where are we going to locate our website? So after the planning phase, we design. And we have to design the way it looks and the contents that we want to display. So the user interface is very important as we've seen before, so we should prototype it. We can make, for example, a mock-up on paper to see how we want it to look. Where are the menus going to be? Where are we going to put the tabs? Where are we going to put the contact details? And where are we going to put some pictures? We can make a mock-up on paper. Include the users. Ask the users how they want to see it. Ask the user if they like your mock-up, if possible. So we can decide on different website layout. Do we want it linear? Do we want a hierarchical structure? Do we want to make a webbed? And what will be the type of multimedia content, contents that we want to put on our website? And if possible, make some use cases. Make some typical use case scenarios that the user would do if they would use your website. What would they typically do? How would they look for the information that they're looking for? So if we have the design and we have some prototypes and mock-ups of the user interface, we can actually start doing the work, we can implement. So in website we have to do two things. We have to do the technical implementation when we actually write the HTML code and the JavaScript and the cascading style sheets to make sure that it all looks like the way we have designed it. And, but we also have to create the content and the design. What are going to be the colors? What is going to be the fonts? How do we create the multimedia? And how do we develop the new content? That all makes part of implementing your web. So when this is finally done, we've got all the technological stuff in place and we have all the content created, we have to start testing. So when we test the website, first it's important to make sure that all the functionalities of your website are in place. So, does it actually do what we want it to do? Does the JavaScript work? Does the HTML doesn't give us any errors? If we have that under control, we can see if our website complies with web standards. Because it's, it's important to comply with web standards, because otherwise we can have uh, problems displaying our page. Another important thing is to see if our web page is compatible with all kinds of browsers. We've got many browsers nowadays, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, plus we also have different web browsers nowadays on televisions and on mobile devices, telephones and tablets. So is our website compatible with all of these browsers? And make sure that the functionalities of our forms and our JavaScript works. Make sure that the search engine optimization works. 
Can people find our sites? Do these keywords that we have put in actually work? Do we get to our website or do we maybe get to the competitor, which is not what we want? And do security checks. Is our website secure? If we have an area where customers can, for example, log in with a specific username and password, make sure that it's secure and it works and nobody can see any information that they're not authorized to. So these are mostly functional checks of your website. But there's more. As we have seen, it's very important to think about usability because it's the users that if they don't find your website usable, they will not come back there. So make sure that we kissed. Keep it simple. Did we minimize concepts, words, links and visuals? Didn't we overdo it with the pictures? Is our website fast? Does it load fast in say less than a second? Does it provide assistance to the users? Like for example, does it have provide spell check when text has to be input? Or does it provide autocomplete for your address that you maybe have already put in many times? Autocomplete it and make sure that the user can finish his tasks fast. And is it reliable? Does it contain uh, consistent navigation elements such that the user can easily find information to navigate to? And does it keep a history or state of the navigation that the user has already gone through? And did we respect a simple URL rule? Make it simple. Make sure that people can remember URLs. Make sure that you don't put any implementation details in your URLs. Because you remember that people want to share URLs. They want to WhatsApp a URL to their friends to make sure that they also see your website. So make them short and make them human readable. Then finally important when testing your website is accessibility. There's people that have disabilities but still want to look at your website. People, for example, with vision impairments or mobility impairments or auditory impairments. For all these impairments, there exist tools to help users with these disabilities to look at websites. There's, for example, screen readers, screen magnifiers, there is special devices with joysticks and foot pedals to make sure that people with mobility impairments can look at your website. And there's uh, tools for transcript of audio or captions of videos. So all these tools, need to, we need to test our website to see if it's compatible with these tools such that people with these disability can still access our website and we make sure it's accessible. Then finally, we make public our web, we put it online and we start a maintenance phase. So maintenance phase is typical maintenance activity when you do, when you make something public. First of all, you receive feedback from your users, you update content if it's necessary, you add some new functionality if, if some new functionality was needed, you fix broken links if they're outdated, you monitor your website or you analyze server logs to see if everything goes smoothly, if there's no errors or how uh, high the web traffic is or how low and then we should take some actions to make it more higher and uh, see if we need to do some maintenance in, in the backend servers. So these are all the activities we need to do in order to develop a website. So this concludes the part on web technologies and development.